So I decided off screen that I'm actually going to start reading all the text in this game. I don't know why I wasn't reading it before. I don't know what got, what evil impulse got over me. I guess it was because I was starting the game and I just wanted to read over the fact why I was doing the game and stuff like that. But uh, this episode I will actually start reading the stuff. And I'll start doing a lot better with this game then. Yippee! You've collected enough notes to break the first note door spell. Also, slow spelling. Well, anyways, um, yes, there's, there's note doors in this game. They're kind of like uh, the star doors in Mario 64. We Juju Mumbo's totem pole. Feed us with nice blue stones. Anyways, I don't have the ability to do that yet. Anyways, but the but with um, Mario 64 on the other hand. Um, one of the, uh, they basically, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Basically, in Mario 64, uh, it's the main item. It's the main item you move on with no matter what. Jiggies in this game only unlock levels. And then musical notes will unlock more areas of Grunty's lair. And then, obviously, those, those honeycombs unlock health. Not those, those is full, but, uh, hollow honeycombs unlock health. So, basically every collectible has a purpose in this game, which I will go over as I play, but, uh, yeah, it's weird like that. Also, this takes a little while to do. Sometimes I like to speed it up, but I'm not going to do it this time, because it doesn't take that long. Like, my old LP, I sped it up, and then I started singing the music to the game, and I don't know, It's it wasn't like anything like, it wasn't like a knee slapper or anything. But uh, it was it was it was pretty silly how it sounded. Like hearing my like if you guys have seen Kirby's Epic Yarn, you'll know my high pitched voice like my like my high pitched fast motion voice how it sounds when I put it in double speed. Well, just imagine that singing the Mumbo's Mountain theme song. It was the freaking greatest thing that ever happened to YouTube for a while there, and then I deleted the video like a dumbass. Actually, I think it was on one of my old, 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 old channels, like Super Epic Walkthrough. One of them old channels that doesn't exist anymore, obviously. Don't forget that. That is the thing I always forget when I play this game. I always forget to go down there, and I'll come back to this level like, oh, I forgot something, guys. I'm gonna go up this mountain first. Because there is stuff on this mountain. Not any kind, not anything specific, just stuff. Or is it last show? That was quick! I would make a point saying that in the rest of this game, the Jinjos don't take quite as easy... This is to say that they're very spread out throughout the level, and this level isn't very big or open or confusing at all. Later levels, though, you will have a lot of trouble finding all five Jinjos in every level. Also, fun facts. Um... I figured out that two of the, well, three of the levels, but one of them is only half a level. Three of the levels in Banjo, because Banjo Tui, and one of the levels in uh, Donkey Kong 64, even, were supposed to be originally supposed to be in this game. Um, what they were was in uh, Banjo Tui, there are three levels, spoiler alert. There is Glitter Gulch Mine, Witchy World, and it's called Hailfire Peaks, which is like a half ice, half fire. But they were planning on uh, just a fire, like just the fireside, being called Mount Fire Eyes in this game. And then they were planning on a uh, fungus or fungi forest in Donkey Kong 64. This game was called Fungus Forest, originally being a thing. Also, something really interesting about this guy, Konga. Um, in the original, as you can tell by the, this is the original name. Because if you play as the termite and walk up to him. This is a spoiler, sorry about the spoiler. Hey, that's Konga's orange, put it back. Anyways. Yum, oranges are nice. They are nice. They are very nice. Anyways. Oh, Chimpy liked Konga's orange. Chimpy helped Fat Bear and Bird. Anyways. Um, what I was saying was his original name... It, it actually, the text will say that if you play the tournament. It will say, Congo. Now, I'm not certain on this, but I believe that is a sexual innuendo. I'm actually pretty sure it's a sexual innuendo. It's like a, don't know exactly what it is, because I'm not exactly the smartest person alive, but uh, that is definitely a sexual innuendo. I know that much. And, uh, 
Congo, ladies and gentlemen. We're calling him that. And here's the move. Time for the buzzard to learn the ancient ways of the egg. I'm listening, Beetle Breath. Hold Z, then press the top C button to shoot an egg out of your mouth. Hey, that sounds cool. Anything else? Sure, press the bottom C button instead, and you can shoot them out from your behind. From behind. She sounds painful. I wish I'd never asked. Birded Brain can carry 100 eggs in her backpack. Oh, and you can also use a control stick to aim while you are sh crouching eggs. Crouching egg sighting, huh? Now that you've learned to use the eggs, here's 50 to practice with. Hmm, your energy's a little low. I'll fill it up for you. That's my dramatic voice. And then there's Royal Banjo, I can't teach you anything else in this world. It basically says the thing when you've learned all the moves. Because there's... I don't think there is a way of knowing how many there are. I played this game so many times I wouldn't know. I just memorized them all. But he'll tell you how you found them all. Be safe here. Bear can't hit Konga. You are the egg hit Konga. And then basically how it works is you shoot him, then you dodge him, and you shoot him again, and then run for it. Because he's dead now. Ugh, bear beats Konga. Do you give prize to bear? And he drops a jiggy, and you're good. But he isn't down forever, so just gotta hurry. And also, I always thought that Chimpy was supposed to be like Diddy Kong, and Konga or Congo was supposed to be Donkey Kong. Which I can see where Kong at all came from. It's actually Japanese or monkey, but anyways. Um, but yeah, like, this, this game, like, like, freaking, is it? I mean, seriously. Because, um, I know Donkey Kong is a, is, a, is another Rareware creation. Or not creation, but trademark. It was a trademark at the time. I'm getting careful with this, I don't mess it up. I'll jump on top of this one. This is one of the things you never really knew about. And you're like, oh, that's where it was this whole time. Anyways, Konga or Congo. Like, are they. Is he supposed to be a Donkey Kong parody? Like, because it is by the same company. So I would, I would understand if they did do that, but. Hmm. It's a good question. There's eggs on top, so that's nothing to worry about. It's really important. Me, Mumble, best shot band in girl game. Can't help Banjo and Filthy Feathers one. Watch it, Hut Boy. Bumbo's magic tokens hit by which find tokens and Bumbo help you. Ah, Banjo has plenty tokens. Stand on skull and press B to see mighty Bumbo magic. I should use a Jamaican accent. That would be funny. Anyways, let's turn here real quick. Save the heights effect there. But yes, Mum uh, yeah, Bumbo will transform you into stuff. Like I said earlier, you get to become a termite. And that is how you get the uh, Congo. Congo text. Bumbo is magic free to change back. You come when ready. And then turn my bit small, but not bad for first spell. I've memorized the entire this entire game's scripts. So because I played it so many freaking times. So like if I miss one of the texts, I can just read it myself, like well, what I remember. And I'm usually pretty dang close to what it originally said. Like I actually I think one time I did a uh, I was doing an LP to this game. And I read the entire intro without the text in the bottom. Like it was, it was obviously there. I wasn't looking at it. I just read the entire thing. Let's see if I can get him to say Congo. Oh, that's how you gotta do. You gotta, you gotta game shark it to make him say Congo. Sorry about that. I, I I saw a video one time. Some guy made him say Congo. Basically, what you gotta do is you gotta uh, game shark it and fly yourself with moon jump up there, and he'll say Congo. So yeah, that's rare, taking the lazy way out. Instead of actually removing something dirty, they just, uh, just made it impossible to reach. Same approach they took in um, every other game they've made. <laughs> really makes you wonder about background things in games, though. Seriously, like, you always think there might be, like, a level hidden behind it. Get up there. Thank you. So now you can see he can walk on steeper slopes than even Kazooie can. Hey, where did you get those shorts? I want them. Oh yeah, I also have banjos close still. You found all 100 notes in this world. Well done. Anyways. Uh, but yeah, this is uh... Yeah, it makes you wonder about background stuff. Give me that back, cool backpack or else. Also, this is really hard. But uh... Yeah, he can walk up, I believe, any steep slope he wants. It, it just... It has to be pretty steep to not walk on it. Like, this right here is one you can't walk on. That's about how steep it's gotta be. Maybe about this. Yeah, that's about it. You can get pretty pretty far with this thing. And that's it. And that's everything. This is 
is a really cool level, by the way. I just want to make a point saying that, too. It's a really cool design for a level. Now, make sure when you leave this level, you're still playing as a termite. Because if you're not playing as a termite, you're going to miss out on something really important. Which I don't think you want to do. Also, I gotta be really careful with this LP not to die. Which I don't think I should, because I'm really good at this game. Grunty's magic stops you from taking notes off the world, but 100 you just collected counts as your best note score. Try to get 100 in each world as they are needed to open this note, the note doors. And if you get 100 in each world, there is a bonus note door at the end, which doubles your health bar, of course. Which isn't really a spoiler, it's something that you think, oh, well, I better try to find all the notes. Mumbo magic gets weak, animal turn back or magic go. Magic all gone, must go back to a barren birdie now. Now, I might do a bonus episode at the end, I'm not sure if I really want to or not. I actually have a Game Shark, and um, it actually has a code in it that lets you have moon jumping in this game. I figured out that if you moon jump as the uh, different uh, transformations past the area where Mumbo tells you you have to turn back, it'll actually uh, let you play any level you want as a transformation. This is a note door, sealed by Grunty with one of her powerful musical spells. Open it up then, jam jars. It's not that simple. To open it, you must collect the musical notes from the worlds. How many do we need? The number on the door is the strength of the magic spell. The combined total of all your best note scores from the worlds must be at least this to break the Grunty's magic. When you open a world door, baddies escape and roam once more. Hmm, your energy's a little low. I'll fill it up for you. And basically what Grunty means by that, what she just said, is if you notice there's a termite outside of uh, the door to the level. Basically, when you play a level for your first time, and you leave it, the enemies from the level are actually walking around the area where the level's at. Which doesn't make any sense, doesn't need to make any sense. It doesn't work off any like real-time, like Minecraft's nether portals do nowadays or anything. It's just, it's just a programming thing. It to remove pieces that you've already put down, press the down C button. But once the picture is complete, you can't remove the pieces. The picture? The picture? It's like a picture, but instead of pit, there's P. A picture? Then there's the picture. That's what I call a real poop shot. I'm a pooptographer. Okay, anyways. I'm a fartographer. A fart photographer. Anyways, um, you've activated a magic cauldron. Find two the same color to create a shortcut. And basically, they work like uh, actually they work kind of like the banana ports in Donkey Kong 64 with the little press Z to teleport. But they're only in Grunty's lair. They are not in uh, the levels. And if you're gonna compare this game to Donkey Kong 64, I'm just gonna give you guys a little tip. This game is older than Donkey Kong 64, so it's a little bit underdeveloped compared to it. Donkey Kong 64 came out after even the sequel to this game came out. So, just consider that for a second. Also, Donkey Kong 64 has gotta be one of the longest games in the system. Arguably, arguably one of the two of the longest games that I own are either Donkey Kong 64 or Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda. Even Majora's Mask is kind of short compared to Ocarina of Time. You've activated the Magic Cauldron. Find two the same color to create a shortcut. That was a weird voice, but I liked it. But yeah, that's actually the reason I don't LP Zelda games anymore. It's simply because them games are freaking longer than longer than Schwarzenegger's dick. And um, yeah, I just I ain't got the time to LP games like that. Because I'd, I'd just be editing the same game over and over again. I literally got bored of editing Kirby's Epic Yarn. I was like, screw it, I'm not doing this game anymore. Not yet. Also, I watched a really uh, cool... You know, if you guys know who Swordless Link is, um, he does really good um, speedruns of games. And he can actually get games for N64 done in like 20 minutes using glitches. And he can get them done in like 2 hours without glitches. And uh, he actually did a full 100% speedrun of this game, got everything in it in like two hours. Now this is indeed a puzzle room, if you actually read the little sign there, you'll see the level is. I'm not going to do that though, because I don't want to spoil anything. But uh, yeah, there's a puzzle there, and there's no puzzle thing, there's no button to do it with. Main reason is that is the last level of the game. Don't know why they put it here. 
But uh, I think it was this might have been originally been the uh, fungus forest room. But uh, anyways, it yeah, it's the last puzzle, and it takes more than ten jiggies to open, or at least enough jiggies to the point where you won't have any left after Mumbo's Mountain, and um, you won't be able to do the rest of the game. It'll be impossible. So basically, we give all the other levels done and unlocked. Uh, you can enter that one, and uh, yeah. Nice programming, Rare. I really do think that is a great programming method. I don't know what I'm going up here for. It's kind of pointless. I'm just going to go through the level now. Wasted so much time outside in Grunty's Lair. But we got a lot of progress done in Grunty's Lair. Activated two magic cauldrons, got some Mumbo tokens. Did a great thing. Ahoy there! This be Treasure Trove Cove. There be two new moves to learn here. Or to get to find, whatever, I don't care. Also, Treasure Trove Cove, why a lot of people hate this level, is freaking Snacker the Shark will chase you. And if that isn't bad enough, it plays like a parody of the Jaws theme while he's chasing you. Now, if that isn't one of the most nerve-wracking things a game could do to you, I don't know what is. Okay, maybe the eye poke machine in Dead Space 2 is pretty nerve-wracking, but still. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Super Meat Boy is pretty nerve-wracking, but it doesn't, it doesn't... It don't seem to Super Meat Boy playing freaking Jaws parody. It just plays fucking, like, 8-bit techno shit. Whatever the hell you call Meat Boy's music. That's another thing, but that's, 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 another, that's another game. I, I can't really LP that game. That game is too fucking hard to LP. You fail too much. But it's one of them games I would love to just play on this channel sometime. At some point, just like do like one level of it or something like that, or review it or something. Because that is a great game, honestly. It's one of my favorite games in the Xbox Arcade. Um, in argument with this game, it's Xbox version, and uh, um, also Sonic Adventures Xbox version. I own that as well. And uh, that's that's also a really good remake of a game. Because I actually, not the GameCube version, I actually own the Dreamcast version of Sonic Adventure. The original, and then I got the Xbox remake, which involves all the updates the GameCube added, plus more. And that is, that is a great remake. Ahoy there, this be Blubber's treasure. Like, I thought the missions were a great add-on. And like, basically, I think how it works, I'm not sure, but uh, how it works is uh, if you buy the game, it's just like the old Dreamcast version, and there's like, a, like, a, like for an extra point, you can get all the stuff that Director's Cut had, or something like that. I don't know exactly how it works. Either way, it was a great game, still. And, uh, still haven't gotten through the entire thing yet, so I need to... I haven't gotten everything in the game yet, which is makes it a perfect game, too. Because it's long. It's long and hard. Like, you say that. Like, I like to see you say that about your Call of Duty is long and hard. My game's longer and harder than yours is. I guess I'm going underwater. I don't know why I did that. Let's go to this boss fight here. This is, uh... Oh, it's Snipper. It's Snipper. Snipper. I always say Snipper trying to say Nipper. Hey, this Snipper's beach. You'll find nothing without Nipper's help. Help us then, Crustacean Brain. Grr, cheeky bird, ding feathers clipping. Oh yeah, just try it, Shellhead. You first snipper makes me mad. Maybe I'll just add it. Maybe he needs a short snigger voice. Fun hurt me a little bit. Take that, big mouth bird. Oh, don't go in there. That's not smart, Banjo. The last hit's the hardest one for some reason. I don't usually suck at it. I don't know what was going on there. I think it was because I got hurt on purpose and they can go. So I can be able to use my, my short snigger voice. But, uh. That was brilliant. Nah, that was dead brilliant. I'm just gonna do this real quick. This room doesn't take long to do. Definitely less than a minute. There's also two crabs in here. Gotta watch out for. Come here, babies. Is this possibly Nipper or his babies? Actually, where the hell does Nipper go? That's that's scary. I was making a point saying that this is scary. There is no Nipper in here. Like s crying or anything. Unless there's like some kind of part that I didn't know about or something. But, uh, that's that's the end of the episode. See you guys in the next one. <laughs>